Hello. We're going to find out if pro mountain bikers, what what they ride regularly. Like, do they fix flats? Are they a person that needs a tool? Are they the tool that doesn't take any tools? We're going to go and find out right now. Okay, so which bike do you ride when you're not training? What bike do you ride the most? For me, the downhill bike. Like, I hate pedaling, so I like ride my trail bike twice a year or something. And that's like true, I hate it. And the downhill bike, I ride as much as I can. Like, even if I, like my, my schedule for the week, if I have three gym and two days riding, I'll just gym, like, oh, sorry, sorry, but. I'd go ride instead of anything else on the downer bike. Okay. I mean, it's working. Like, yeah. you're going okay. So, yeah. Loic? I'm speechless when I hear this because I'm like, how do you hate pilling? Like, that's all we do, you know? But, uh, yeah, it's working for him. I'm doing, I do a lot of Epic Evo, which is like a 120 cross country bike, a little bit more aggressive. That's perfect for where I live and really fun bike. And I don't like pedaling so much. So, that bike really, I get, Downy Lills, you know, yeah, we're yeah, like yeah. that. But that bike just goes up so well, you feel almost fit. And then down pretty well too, so favorite bike. Is it the amazing cargo bike that's around the corner? Probably out shot. Oh, it's gone. It absolutely would be. The Slav has been and a very enjoyable bike to ride and the hardest bike in the world, I think, to wheelie. So it's been quite the challenge try trying to learn to do that. Kate's been teaching us very well. But uh, up until this point, I would say the rail for the last two or three years has definitely been the daily driver. But we've just recently got the new fuel, the Fuel EX, um, which is a nice little short travel, 140 mil, and it's the perfect bike for the Tweed Valley. So I've actually been riding that a lot, getting really back into my pedaling again, and yeah, that enduro life, so. Uh, enduro, enduro coming up. I just feel like I need to get fit again. All this e-bike riding, it really, the e-bike phase really took me by the balls. You know, it took me for a wander through the woods, and here I am three years later emerging again, going, wow, I need to learn to pedal. <laughs> so yeah, it feels back in my life again. Okay. I'm very happy about it. Um, my downhill bike, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, easy. When I'm not racing and I'm at home, pretty much trail bike and road bike. I really enjoy the road. I don't know why. So it's a good way to see the countryside, especially where I live. And yeah, like just it's good fitness and yeah, I really enjoy it. But um, normally when I'm away, I'm always on the mountain bike. So it's nice to come home and just chill on the road bike. Oh, I'd say my e-bike recently. It used to be my trail bike. I, used to, I still between them both quite a lot. Um, but my e-bike this winter has been a massive change. I'm living in Scotland, yeah. so like it's pretty. The winters are pretty long, cold, and dark. It's uh, I do love it, but getting the e-bike just makes you want to go out and ride, and you can get like good laps in. Never mind the weather. Whereas on the trail bike, going up a climb in snowy conditions for one lap down is just not that enjoyable. So yeah. Uh, when I'm not racing or training, I would probably pick up my e-bike, Saracen Aerial e-bike. Probably, if it's not, if it's not that, then it's probably a motorbike, Yamaha R6. Okay. Wow. Okay. Quick bike too. Probably my Enduro bike. Okay. Which is is it Spectral 125 or just full Spectral? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Nice bike. <laughs> okay. Um, I actually would say my supercaliber trek supercaliber it's an nice. xc bike yeah, yeah. um and the whole xc team races it absolutely amazing bike um and yeah i think it's just partly the trails we have at home you can ride any bike on the trails not a downhill bike but any bike and you'd get down them but the supercaliber is the best for what we have and plus evie richards from the xc team we live in the same village we ride a lot together so it's perfect I mostly, I'm sorry to say, ride a bullet e-bike, Santa Cruz bullet. But e-bike one? Right. Oh, nice. Because I, I'm not very fit and I ride with athletes a lot and they're all very fit. So for me to ride a bike and to join in and to be part of it, if I ride the e-bike and eco, I'm kind of like, that. we can go out all day together and I can join in. How many bikes do you own? Um, oh, it has to be upward of 15 or 20. Okay, nice, good number. Bikes, yeah. I would, I'd like to know what the average is for a professional mountain biker, but 
You know, we get these nice bikes and we're allowed to keep them every now and then and they're worth something to us, they're not really worth something to anybody else. So before you know it, 10 years later, you've just got a pile of bikes in the corner that mean something to you, so don't want to sell them, you know? Yeah, I do. I've got, I've got someone's forks that I've still got on my shed that aren't mine. I've never ridden them, but yeah. yeah. You look at them and it's a nice memory with it or yeah, a nice moment that you remember, a cool paint job that you might never get again or something like that. It's nice to keep these things. So I've got quite a few based on that, but the bikes I actually just ride daily day, it's like three. I need bike, a trail bike and a dyno bike, so. Okay, nice. So not, not loads. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. Quite a few at the moment. Um, I'm riding... Uh, an Aerial 60 trail bike, an e-bike. I've just built a new Genesis road bike, which is very nice. Um, I've got a downhill bike and a dirt jump bike. Nice. Is that five or six? I think that's six, yeah. yeah. Just enough okay. for nearly every day of the week. <laughs> Perfect. How many bikes have you got? Oh God, too many, <laughs> too many. I actually need to get rid of a couple. My brothers were complaining, but it's... um significantly in the double digits significantly <laughs> i can't say the exact number because it's embarrassing <laughs> okay that's fine we can filter that oh a lot so me and my flatmates all ride and we have one single garage and the garage is way too full like you can barely move in that thing so yeah i've got my downhill bike my trail bike my dirt jumper my motorbike does that count if that counts that counts um, yeah, totally. And I just got a gravel bike, so I've got five bikes. Oh, and a trials bike now, six bikes. So yeah. But then everyone in the house, there's five of us. Everyone has like three or four bikes, so it's very full. Yeah. Okay, so lots of bikes. Maybe six or seven. Yeah, about the same. Okay, six or seven. Okay, relatively no number. Heard higher. But we change every year, so like, I keep a bike, a downhill bike every year from every season, just as a memory. Okay and we cannot sell them anyways. And then at least like one cross country bike, one road bike and one jumper and one e-bike. Okay. <laughs> I think the current's at like 10, 10 that I use. We've got a couple hanging up, all the race bikes and that, but yeah, 10. Okay, nice. Mm, I got a road bike. Well, I borrow a road bike, so it's not like I don't own it, okay. you know? And I have a tr enduro bike and a downer bike. Okay, nice. Not so many. Okay, good. My garage is a bit full at the moment. <laughs> I got Eve Trail, jump bike, road bike, and a couple down downhill bikes. But the downhill bikes are the ones from last season. I don't really want to get rid of them because they're a bit special, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah they would yeah. be, yeah. So I don't have an downhill bike, but yeah. I've got bits of other people's old race yeah. bikes. So. I'm very lucky, very lucky. Nice. <laughs> On a group ride, are you the person that has all the tools, all the snacks? Are you the person that needs all the tools and needs all the snacks? I'll always have the snacks, but I never have the tools. Uh, but I always make sure I ride with someone that does. Um, so yeah, I'm probably quite annoying on group rides. But to be honest, I always maintain my bike fairly well, so it never really breaks, which is good. And I have a lot of friends that don't maintain their bikes very well. There's one in particular that's particularly bad. Then something <laughs> breaks every time we go for a ride, but uh, yeah. So, might be a bit of luck. I'd like to, uh, you were a bit cocky with your questions. I'm a bit cocky with my riding. I'm quite a smooth criminal, to be oh, honest. I'm nice. pretty gentle in part. So I'm the guy that turns up with nothing and feels really embarrassed every one out of 10 rides maybe where I'm like, <laughs> might need to borrow one of everything. <laughs> but I always have food and I always have water and very, very rarely puncture. Shout out to the sponsors, our, our setup's pretty solid. Smooth, very yeah, nicely done. Keep it nice and smooth, so yeah. I'm normally the guy that rolls around lightweight with not a whole lot, hopes for the best. Yeah, if good. I break down, I take it as a sign to go home. Okay. That's, that, I'm that type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the cafe three hours early. <laughs> I'll take just the multi-tool, oh, it's normally on the bike, uh, snacks for myself, <laughs> and that's pretty much about it. Yeah, I take all the snacks, but no tools, none. I'm going for the optimistic ride, you know? <laughs> and if something happens, I just go home. Doesn't matter. I'll call someone. Yeah. Assisted life, you know? A younger Greg brought nothing, no, not even food. Now I'm pretty good, I think. Now I can, like, even pack a few bars for friends or that. But, yeah, I'm pretty good now. Depends what I'm riding. If I go out on the road, I carry everything. I have my little handlebar bag and I carry everything, like spare rain jacket, all of it. Go on an XC ride or a mountain bike ride, 
absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Especially it's even worse when I'm not on my enduro bike because that at least has the little Bond Traeger tool in the headset. Nice. So I can do some little things like if you hit your brake lever or something. But my XC bike, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Excellent. Not the answer I was expecting from Enduroist, but that's good. Um, probably right in the middle. I'll always take snacks and try to take a molly tool, but usually, yeah, usually I, when I do pedal, I always need some kind of help. So, yeah, I'm usually there to help. Like, I'm probably the more helpful person in the bike park because no one in the bike park takes tools. Oh. But in terms of, like, people who ride, like, and go for big pedals, I'm probably less, like, prepared than everyone else. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, I have all the tools. It's, yeah, it's um, sometimes quite embarrassing. I even have like a small set of Nipex in my bum bag. Oh, like, nice. The even smaller one than this, so there's like the next oh, yeah, yeah. down, and I have that in like my bum bag, just in case. No, nice, that's good. That's really good. So, yeah, and definitely a, a running joke, how much I bring on bike rides that's completely unnecessary. I, yeah, I th I'm always, it's better be over-prepared than not have the tool that you need to use. Neither. Because I'm quite lucky. I never like, get any, like, problems. I just ride. I feel like the less you do, the less you have to do. Does that make sense? I feel like yep. if you do a lot with your brakes and try to, like, bleed them and change your pads, like, it just always, like, it never works. But if you just let it be and just ride, it just always works. It's, uh, I like it. I think that's good advice. Yeah. I reckon I've, I've dialed snacks recently. Um, at home, I've had a lot of enduro riders, so they're like, uh, they're always making sure I bring enough food with me so I don't bonk, <laughs> trying to keep up with them. But tools, I'm pretty bad for. Like a multi tool, that's about it, really. If I get a puncture, I'm just going to go home. Like, I'm just, like, <laughs> just going to go home. Like, unless someone's got a tube, I can chuck in. But if, if not, I just, yeah, I'll just call it a day. So you're out on the trail. You randomly, like, there's a bear there on the trail. Yeah. What pro racer, I'm going to say, like, current or, or past, who are you going to pick to take on the bear with you? Oh, Kid Edwards. Kid Edwards, absolutely. One, if Kid stared the bear in the eyes, the bear's gone. He's turning around and he's out of there, I think. Big Kid with his new shaved head. I'd run away. I haven't <laughs> seen shaved Kid. I'm scared. Shaved Kid. It's, a, it's terrifying, honestly. He needs a couple of tattoos on his face. You wouldn't go near him. He's a big cuddly bear inside, but I think the bear would be scared. I'm scared. His kid's hands are bigger than his head as well. He, one punch, I think, would be down, honestly. Yeah. We can maybe tee that up one day. I think that'd be good. Yeah. That'd be yeah, a good yeah. video. <laughs> that'd be viral. Um, Reese Wilson, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Good to see you again. Steve like Pete. Steve Pete could give a bear a run for its money. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Steve Pete. Big, I don't know. Like, he's, he's tall. He's, he's a, like... No, he's, he's a big, big fella. Yeah. I'm not going to mess with him. Yeah. Like, I'd say that Steve Pete definitely would give a bear a run for his money. Noted. And I would run away. Okay. Thank you very much. <sighs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, probably G. Atherton. G. Atherton would just run at him. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, thank you. Yeah. Someone like... Someone big, I think. I'd need someone with a bit of strength behind it. Maybe someone like Sambo, Sam Dale, or uh, Brooke. Probably Brooke would be pretty good. Uh, Petey, maybe. Okay. Yeah, the old someone, school big, big dudes. Yeah, heavy hitters, heavy hitters, yeah. Okay, nice. Uh, we had one suggestion from another racer where it was just like, oh, we'll pick him because we can definitely run away from him. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, that, that thought did go through my mind. Maybe someone that I thought I could definitely run faster than. But uh, I couldn't think of anyone, so. That's fair enough, thank you very much. Okay, so this one is a daft one. Okay. So you're on a trail and you see a bear and it is hypothetical, oh, it's not a real bear. Oh, wow. Whistler. Really scary, a bear was in the tree. I was coming along on my XE bike. I've never turned a bike around and sprinted the other way so fast. I then had to ring someone up because I was worried <laughs> that <laughs> there were other bears and I was just riding around in Whistler on my XE bike on my own. <laughs> So you've got literal experience of this question. That wasn't the intention, but if there's any pro that could have joined you at that time when there was a bear, yeah. what pro would you pick to wrestle a bear? Um, Kate Edwards, 100%. Look at the guy. I mean, honestly, if anyone's going to fight a bear, Cade, for sure. Cade again. He's come and up he's twice. The nicest guy ever, so win-win. Good riding company, I reckon. 
Okay. Amazing. Cade for the win then on bear wrestling. From World Cup racing or from, you know, I feel like Mick Hanna maybe. I feel like Mick Hanna. He's got a crazy look in his eye and he's really strong. So I feel like he probably, or Tracy. Tracy, actually. I picked Tracy. Tracy, definitely. <laughs> I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't wrestle Tracy. But um, she's so nice. I love her to bits. But yeah, I feel like the bear wouldn't stand a chance. Oh no. Oh, he's pretty aggressive. Someone like Loic, who's just massive, could help, you know, like, they can distract it whilst I run away and get out of the way, you know. Or he else is pretty good at, he's good at fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, oh, Brick McDonald, that would be a good one, yeah, Brick. Brick can fight the bear and I'll get out of the way, because I ain't got any chance of that bear, so. <laughs> okay. He's <laughs> uh, got more of a chance than I do. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, we'll go and find Brooke, but thank yeah. you very much. Not that he's good at fighting, but he's just massive, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's yeah. a unit. He's a unit, more than I am, so yeah. <laughs> Maybe Nathan Rini? Good call. I said that too. I don't know how he's doing right now, but I feel like he could be a good, uh, good help to fight a bear. Even though I got this. <laughs> I agree. Rennie's, yeah, I reckon Rennie would be very good at wrestling a bear. Jordan? Uh, maybe G. Ooh. Or Bulldog. Just the big guys. Or maybe Finn, because Finn can be a bit like... Finn's Canadian, so yeah. He can be quite like aggressive sometimes. so... Yeah. This is true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And then so one Finn, of the good thing with Finn is we're faster than him, so we can just get away, and then the bear gets Finn. So, so twofold. A, he can wrestle it, and also you're quicker. Okay, yeah, nice. Exactly. Do we need to say it louder so Finn can hear? I think he, he knows. I think he'll pretend not to hear it anyways. <laughs> Maybe Brooke. Because, like, it's... this might say sound bad, but like I see him Brooks in a few fights, and I'm like... I would be scared to fight Brooke. And I, but you have like Loic and Amory who's like quite like strong. But I don't know, like he's just crazy. So he would just, I think he would just fight the bear, you know? You're not the only person that said that. So I think, <laughs> I think there's form there. Um, I vote for Braga. Yeah, but I think because I know Bragi and like I know that like deep down he's just a softy. So it's like. I don't know, like we grew up together and like okay, yeah, yeah. he's always super tough on his bike but like I don't know now because I don't hang out with him anymore but like back in the days he was like not so tough off the bike, you know? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> but I see what you mean. So for me, it feels like that was a real mixed bag. Like some riders take everything with them, uh, shout out to the Enduro racer, spot them, and some of them just luck it out. What do you take on your ride? Are you the person that always takes all the tools or are you the tool that needs someone else's tools? Let us know in the comments below.